Okay guys, back again. It's been a while since I uploaded a video, about five days roughly, and I said, what the heck, uh, I'll put this video up. Um, a few people have asked me about certain components and how to use schematic symbols and stuff. Basically, what this video is about, it's not to go into the technical aspects of these individual pieces before you're here. It's just to show you basically what each part is what it is, what you call it, and also a schematic diagram of each individual item you see here. Uh, like I say, this is not meant to be a technical uh, manual <laughs> of such for this. This is just a basic, um, hands-on, um, brief description of each individual part, schematic symbols, and what they could possibly be used for on a circuit. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, record this video, and uh, hopefully some people out there may, uh, may get something from this, um, other people may not, and if you do, I'm happy, if not, well, if you have any questions, post them below in the videos, in the video comments. Hey right, folks, so basically, today's video is... Basically, what you can find inside a piece of equipment and uh, how you can tell what each part actually is. Key okay, folks, so here we go. Um, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to briefly des uh, describe what each one of these components here are, uh, what it's called, and then afterwards, after we go through all these lists, we'll go through these one by one and see the schematic diagram for them. Um, so, I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Okay, so first up, we have this big old uh, rectangle beast with wires hanging out of it. Um, this is a uh, AC transformer. Uh, in this particular model, this converts 115 volts AC from your uh, socket, from your power socket. Converts at 115 volts down to uh, like 24 or 12 or 13 volts that you can then rectify. It's basically the heart of a power supply. Um, the power supply, the first thing it needs is a transformer. And that's it right there. That basically converts your 115 down to a lower voltage. Um, some uh, some models of transformers, they can actually up the voltage from 115 volt to 400 or 500 volts or even more. So you have step up transformers and you have step down transformers. In the case of this model, it's a step down. It takes 115 volts and steps it down to 24 volts. And that is a mains transformer. We have this filler here. Um, this is called a uh, electrolytic capacitor. This particular capacitor has two individual electro electrolytic capacitors built into it. Um, at position one, you have a 40 volt at 5,000 UF, and capacitor two is 40 volt, 5,000 UF, and that one is negative. And you can see the bottoms here, and you can tell that's your two positives on your capacitor, and that's your negative. So there's your. That's where you get to three three starts on the bottom of your cap. This one has two capacitors built in. It's known as an electrolytic capacitor and is used for filtering. Now we have this big bad boy here. Um, I'll let you guys ponder this one for a minute as to what it's called, what it's used for. It's made of bake, back bake light. I believe it's made of bake light, looks like it. Um, and it's mechanical. So, give up. Basically, this is a 12 volt relay. It's for switching circuits. You apply 12 volt to the coil, which is here and here, and this relay leader, the coil leader, will push up or pull down, and thus moving your contacts up or down. It's used for controlling circuits, power them off or power, power them up or power them off. That is a relay. Okay, I'm sure we all know what this is. Uh, it's a toggle switch. 
This one here has got two switches built into it. You have three starts. Um, these guys are going to light up, so there's probably a neon bulb inside. And uh, you switch back and forth on them. These are on and off. So basically you look at the contacts on the inside. When you push up on them, these two bottom pins are connected. You push down, these two top pins. The, con the center pin would be your common on your switch. So there you go. That is what's known as a... Okay, so we got two types of electronic components here. Both of these are called variable potentiometers, or just potentiometers. Uh, basically, you have two types here. You just have a just a regular potentiometer, and then you have another one here, a potentiometer with a on-off switch, which is on the back of it here. And you hear the click. Turns it off. Turns it on. And you adjust the resistance when you turn the unit on and you rotate the control there's actually a uh, a uh, carbon trace inside on this circuit board and you got a slider that slides back and forth so we'll uh, take one of these apart later and show you the guts of the potentiometer so that's a potentiometer with an actual on off switch and that's a potentiometer with no on off switch Okay, then we have this component here. This is known as a uh, variable capacitor. You have uh, sliders and stator uh, plates, and these plates never touch each other, ever. But they do, uh, you rotate the knob, and this plate up here rotates and moves close to these plates here, and thus changing the capacitance. Use these in uh, on antenna tuners, receivers. Uh, there's lots of uses for uh, um, tuning capacitors like this. These comes in different sizes, different styles. Um, a lot of uses. You see them in a lot of electronic equipment. That is a variable capacitor very useful and a lot of these are very expensive this one being Hammerland New York variable cap and then we have a little audio transformer uh, basically it's a audio uh, impedance matching transformer um, if you got like an 8 ohm speaker and you're trying to draw and your audio circuit is like 600 ohms and you're trying to get, match it to, to an 8 ohm circuit basically is what you'd use it's an audio matching transformer you find these in a lot of different uh, different um, circuits different pieces of equipment and in audio equipment stereos amplifiers you'll see a lot of those so that is basically an audio matching transformer very useful, very useful product, especially if you want to build uh, digital interfaces for uh, HF radios for digital modes. And then, of course, we have this feller. Most of us know what this is. It's a, uh, it's an old S meter. Tell you, uh, it can tell you basically your signal strands. It can tell you your RF power. Um, these things you can get them to show either voltage or amperage. Um, Meters are very useful in a lot of equipment, and you will see them in a lot of different equipment. As you can see, they're used in the wire meters, they're used in antenna meters, or antenna analyzers rather. Uh, you'll even see them in power supplies. So, meters come in all shapes and sizes, and, for, and they're used in various functions of equipment. And then we just have the plain old carbon resistor, as you can see here, uh, for setting the resistance and circuits. Uh, these also comes in different shapes and sizes. Uh, some are small, some are large, some are pretty big. But uh, just a plain old resistor. And then we have an actual switch, a momentary switch. 
push in, push out, on off. There's that actual monitor I thought it was, but she's actual on off switch. You see uh, six six sets of pins here, or six pins I should say. So she's two pole. Um, each side has its own slider, so when you push in, the center pin and the right pin are connected. And when you press it out, the center pin and the left hand pin is connected. The common pin or the common pin is the center pin. So when you look at pushing it in, you can almost imagine a piece of uh, contact or a contact inside making contact here. Basically just an on-off switch. And then we have the ordinary transistor. Uh, we've you've seen these in lots of pieces of equipment. They're in everything nowadays. Um, this one here is a 2N3904, which makes it a NPN type transistor. Um, very useful in a lot of equipment and projects. And then we have a 7912. Um, basically what this is, it's a negative 12 volt regulator. So if you've got a circuit that you need to regulate a circuit to run on 12 volt negative power and to keep it at 12 volt negative, you would use a 7912 um, 12 volt negative voltage regulator. Uh, you can put a negative uh, 7912 in the negative side and you can put a 7812 in the positive side. The 9 des designates negative and an 8 designates positive on these. 7912. It's a negative voltage regulator. And then we just have the ordinary ceramic capacitor. This one is 0.04 UF. Uh, you see these in a lot of different uh, type of equipment. Uh, you see them in radio equipment, stereos, amplifiers. You see these in just about everything nowadays. Now, everything is going tiny, SMT nowadays, but in some of the older equipment you will definitely find um, capacitors, ceramic caps like this one. And then we have the geranium diode. Um, you see these in, especially if you want to build little crystal receivers, crystal radios and whatnot. Uh, geranium receivers, or geranium diodes I should say, are used. It uh, converts um, basically RF energy from coming down to your antenna and it converts it to an audio signal. Um, basically it's a diode and it allows uh, voltage to pass through but block it the other direction. Uh, like I say there's different types of diodes and uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes and they do a lot of different things depending on the type of diode that you and have. And then we have this critter in a glass tube. Basically this is referred to as a fuse. Uh, these come in all kinds of different, again, different shapes and sizes. Um, this is just a glass tube, probably probably like 5 amp, 3 to 5 amps. Um, these are used to protect circuits against short circuits or fires. Very useful and every circuit that's uh, out there today should have a fuse installed for safety. And you have this big filler here, it's actual quartz crystal. It's for frequency determination either for receivers or transmitters. Um, this is a rather large crystal. Uh, they come in different sizes. Um, so we got this one and just for a different size comparison that's another actual crystal quartz there. Crystal, uh, quartz crystal and used for uh, frequency. You determine your C frequency, transmit frequency, IF frequency, uh, filters. Crystals are used in a lot of different equipment, especially HF equipment for filtering. Yep, that's the quartz crystal. And then we have this critter here. It's just an ordinary inductor. It's a pile of wire uh, with a ton of uh, uh, wire just wrapped around in circles one after the other and they're um, connected, not connected, but they're separated, but they're so close together that uh, it almost looks like they're it's just copper wire, just like a copper pad but that wire is that thin, you can hardly see the separations in them that there's probably 200 uh, turns of wire on that but in any state, in any case, that is a ordinary inductor and now we have a diode here um, silicone type I would assume uh, or ceramic, hard to tell. Um, but anyways, this type of diode would be used for um, AC rectification. 
uh, what it would do, it would take an AC voltage and convert it to DC. Um, you'll see these in power supplies, used in uh, half halfway bridge rectifiers or full wave rectifi rectifiers. Basically, they're used to convert AC to DC. And then we have another relay. Uh, this one is similar to the one here. But smaller again relays can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes from large to small um, size of them or the contact inside dictates how much current that the relay can safely handle without burning up the contacts it's again used for switching circuits on or off and then we have the famous uh, LED light emitting diode uh, use these for indicators on panels. They're using a lot of different equipment. Um, you see them in CB radios, and amateur radios, even audio amplifiers. Um, they can be used for lots of type of indication indicators. They can indicate uh, RF, audio, um, on or off, transmit, receive. Um, basically, any type of circuit you need to monitor, uh, you can use an LED to use it. Um, the go you use with the resistor to uh, dictate the voltage across the diode of the LED. If you have too much voltage, you can burn them out. But basically, the LED is basically for uh, indication of a circuit, either on or off. Uh, audio, DC, AC, LED can be used for a lot of different things depending on the circuit. Mainly used for indication. And then we have these little uh, trimmer inductors. Or IF cans, IF transformers, IF inductors, whatever you want to call them. You see these in a lot of AM, FM radios. Uh, you see them in a lot of CB radios, amateur radios. These are very useful. And they're used quite a bit for frequency determination and for sensitivity. Um, they have a lot of different uses. But uh, basically, it's a transformer. And then we have the uh, what's known as an electron tube or valve as they say over in Europe uh, we have a pile of them here but that is a vacuum tube um, these guys here <laughs> used to be using a lot of electronic equipment back in the day and, and uh, they pretty much phased them out in the 60s and 70s uh, for the transistor which sits here but uh, a lot of audio fanatics out there um, tubes are starting to make a comeback for audio type uh, circuits basically for their nice sound and quality but the vacuum tube is the predecessor to today's transistor um, some of these uh, got quite a nice value on them um, and still widely used today believe it or not but an electron uh, vacuum tube and then we have another diode here um, this one here is actually a zener diode it's a 9 volt zener diode and they use, these are mainly used for uh, voltage stabilization in a circuit. If you've got like 12 volts going into it, into a circuit and you need to make sure it stays at a certain value of 9 volts to work properly, you put a 9 volt uh, Zener diode. And it's just basically used for uh, voltage regulation in circuits. Uh, you see them being used in a lot of CB radio equipment, amateur radio equipment. You even see them in a lot of audio equipment. But the uh, Zener diodes are very useful. And uh, I'll show you this schematic diagram for that now. Shortly. And then we have this inductor here. But uh, this inductor also has a, um, has a slug in the center of it. Um, you can actually tune the inductor by moving this uh, ferrite slug up or down. Thus varying the inductance of the, uh, of the wiring. Um, this one, like this one here, is just a set inductance. It can't be changed. The value of it is what it is. But uh, this one here, by moving that ferrite slug up or down, you can change the inductance a little bit of the coil. Very useful. Again, you see these used in a lot of uh, CB radio equipment, amateur radio equipment, and receivers. And transmitters, of course. Very useful piece of a, a, a component. To and then have. we have the ordinary light bulb. So, yeah. Don't need to say much about these. But basically, it's used for indication of circuits, either on or off. Uh, they can be used for lighting up uh, meters, such as this one here. So you can see them. Light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulb. We know what they are. And then we have a full wave bridge rectifier. 
Uh, this one uses four diodes for full uh, rectification. The two center pins your AC would go on to. Then your two outside pins. The left would be positive and negative would be negative. So you can write your AC to DC with this full wave bridge rectifier. Basically this uses four of these. So it's like taking four of these diodes and putting them in one package. So anyways, so now what we'll do next, we shall do the schematic diagram of each one of these items. Okay guys, so you have your, uh, your primary uh, transformer. Um, you apply your 115 volts to the primary side. And then you have the secondary, which is the other side of the transformer, which has wiring coming off. And that sets your voltages. You have four different taps, so you can basically get four different voltages from this transformer. But long story short, you have a primary, 115, secondary, which is 24 volt. And the schematic diagram for a transformer is this. So you have 115 volts uh, primary voltage, and you have your, which is your 115 is your primary voltage, and 24 volts would be your secondary voltage. That's your transformer. And of course we have our voltage regulator, 7912. Um, in a circuit, basically it would look like this. Again, there's a negative side, so you have your positive voltage, which would go out. Then you have your negative, which would be your input. Then you have your output. And I'm pretty sure it's okay, so then we have our voltage regulator, in this case 7912, which would make it a negative voltage regulator. Uh, this could also have been a 7812, 12 volt positive regulator. So basically, when you look at these, this would be the pinout for both. Um, so you have your, trans your little transistor, your regulator, there's your body, that's your pins. This would be your positive regulator. Do you want to draw another one here? And this would be your negative voltage regulator. And this would be the pinouts for these. So the positive regulator, the same as these here, you would have your input voltage in. This would be your ground. And it would be your output. So say you had 14 volts DC and you want to regulate it to 12 volts. That's how they would work. Now the negative is uh, the pinout is different on your negative. Negative you have a ground. You have your input. And then you have your output. So for here you would put your 14 volts, your negative 14 volt DC, and on this pin here, you would get your negative 12 volt DC voltage. Again, this one would be your positive, this one would be your negative. But that's how they work. The schematic diagrams basically for both units. In ground out. Um, sometimes you'll see them in a circuit as a triangle, like that. Out, in, ground. You can see them like that as well, like a triangle in a circuit. Basically, that's the magnetic diagrams for that critter there. Now we just have the inductor, um, not a whole lot, to, not much of a schematic to this one, but the inductor in a schematic would basically look like that. That is a schematic diagram for your inductor. For a fixed inductor, that's what it looks like, and it's a schematic for it. Next up we have an ordinary resistor. Like the inductor, 
something similar to what the inductor looks like, but this is what the schematic of a resistor looks like. Schematic diagram. The schematic diagram of a resistor. Pretty similar, but you can see the difference of it. And then we have a uh, quartz crystal, again used for frequency determination of circuits. This case is a 33.200 megahertz, uh, third overtone crystal. Um, so this is what the schematic diagram would look like. That's what a crystal would look like in a circuit. The center piece, the center, basically this piece here would be would be the would be the actual crystal, and these two pieces here would be the two contacts, which is the two legs. So there you go. This is the circuit diagram for crystal uh, quartz crystal. Well, next up, we have this uh, on-off switch. Push in, stays in. Push out, let's go. And this is the diagram. Basic, basic circuit diagram for this switch. Of course you have six pins. It would look like this. Each one of these would represent each pin on your switch. And of course you have sliders between these on each side. So you've got contacts here. This contact will slide back and forth depending on the on way if she sits in. In this case, the switch is going down, so I'll just put an arrow. So right now, if you take this switch and you push it down, like that, locked in, that's what happens. You get your contact here, which is a slider that slides back and forth, which makes contact with the pins here. So you push in, these two pins are connected, which are these two here. And these two pins are connected, which is here. But, as you can see, both of them are not connected at all. Not connected to each other, say. Left or right. Just uh, vertical. That's the circuit diagram for a... Uh, then we have an order of relay. Basically, it turns or turns a circuit on or off when you apply a power or remove it. And this is what the diagram of a relay would look like in the circuit. You have your coil. So you, you power would go to here, your ground would be there, you have your core, which is much like your regular transformer, and the only difference is you'll have a set of contacts. And basically what it does, normally, I'll say this one's normally closed, this one's normally open. So what happens right now, normally closed means if there's no power going to the relay, this set of contacts here would always be connected. Then you, if you apply 12 volt DC to the relay, then this will switch from here to here and disconnect this circuit. So basically, as you say, it's on off. That's the circuit diagram for a relay. And of course, then we have the simple light bulb um, in circuits. Um, more than likely, this is the circuit diagram for it. In a lot of different circuits, you'll see a circle like that. You'll see a wire coming like that. And then you'll see like a loop. Sometimes you may see that. Basically, it's just the light bulb. Or come up like that and come down. A couple different ways a circuit disconnect can be done up for a light bulb, but that's a couple well simple easy ones. It's just a light bulb. And then we have the ordinary diode, we have an anode and a cathode, and we all know it convert AC to DC. So schematic diagram for a regular diode like this. Uh, you see a black band here. That would be this piece here. That represents that side of the diode. The voltage will always go this way. It will pass voltage this way, but it will block voltage going past it. It blocks it, so it can't pass. But it will allow voltage pass through it in one direction, it will block it in the other. 
That's the schematic diagram for a ordinary diagram. We have this ordinary audio uh, impedance matching transformer. You see it has three on one side and it has two on the other. See, the same as a regular transformer, you have a primary and secondary. But this is what the circuit diagram of this type of transformer would look like in the circuit. So we have two. You have your coil of wire, much like your regular transformer. You have your core, which again is this piece here. Then you have your output. And then your center. Basically that there, if you're looking at this transformer in this direction, this is exactly what it would look like in the circuit. You have your two pins on this side, one, two, and you have your three pins on this side, one, two, three. So that's what the circuit diagram of this transformer would look like in the circuit. So the next uh, diode we'll look at is an LED, a light emitting diode. Again, used for indication and in circuits. Uh, this do light up. So like the circuit for the regular diode. Same thing as a regular diode. Like that. Again, voltage only passes one way. But this one has that in the circuit. Or would mean that it lights up. This is light is emitting light. So that there is the schematic diagram of an LED. Next item we have is an ordinary fuse. We all know it's for protection and safety. And basically this is what the circuit diagram of a fuse would look like. So there you go. That's the fuse, that's the circuit. 3 amp, 120 volts. That's what it would look like. A little windy, little, little windy up and down sort of setup. But that's the circuit diagram for a fuse. Similar to the resistor, similar to the inductor, but it's got the, the waves. So there you go. That's the new right, fuse. So now we have the variable a potentiometer. Potentiometer. Again, you rotate this to change the uh, resistance inside. So this would be the circuit diagram for a potentiometer. It, uh, it is a resistor, it's a variable resistor. So of course, the schematic diagram would be, a, would be the same as for a resistor. But you have a center pin, which, which is the slider on this. The center pin would be that. That is the schematic diagram for potentiometer. Makes sense, don't it? <laughs> Alright, so we have another potentiometer here, only this one has an on off switch. So this has got to use the same circuit as a regular potentiometer. There's no difference in it. Where's that? The only difference with this one is it has a switch that can be turned on or off. Okay, now we have the ordinary transistor. In this case is a 2N3904. This is what this transistor is. This would be the schematic diagram for this particular transistor. The circuit. Now, you may be asking yourself, what do three of these lines represent? Well, you have your collector, on this one, you have your base on this one, and you have your emitter on this one. Now, if this transistor was a uh, Say a 3906, 
uh, well this one here is an NPN, negative positive negative. Uh, the, the PNP version of this transistor, which would be a uh, 2N3906. This would be what the PNP in P version would look like. Up to this point, it looks a lot like this transistor, but the only difference is this one points in. Notice this one points out, this one points in. And everything is still the same. Base, collector, and emitter. So I get negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. NPN, PNP. That's two different type transistors you can get. There's a whole pile of different transistors. You got FETs, uh, you got regular NPN, NPN, PNP. Um, it's, it's a bunch. It's, it's worth looking in transistors. You want to learn a bit more about them? Get on Google, type in transistor, and you'll see a pile of different types, styles, case styles, sizes, and schematic diagrams for them. They all have an important part in life to play. But in any case, like I say, not in a technical aspect of it, but uh, that's the two different types of transistors. Basic transistors you can run into is an NPN or PNP. All right, so next up we have our variable capacitor. Uh, you see these in a lot of AM, FM radios, receivers, antenna tuners. You see them in a lot of different uh, pieces of equipment. So it's a variable capacitor. So basically this is what the variable capacitor looks like. Circuit diagram of it. You'll notice an arrow go through it. This arrow means it turns, which would mean on your tuning capacitor, it would be this part here. This would represent the arrow in the schematic. But basically, that's the schematic diagram of a variable capacitor. Simple, eh? And then we have a fixed ceramic capacitor. Uh, this is set value, cannot be changed. So this is the circuit diagram of a ceramic capacitor. And you notice there's no arrow, no nothing. It's just that. Uh, these can also be wrote down, be a diagram, they can be like this as well. Just two lines. It can be either or. And usually there in a circuit it'd be called something like C198. Something like that. C mean capacitor. Basically, that's the circuit diagram of a ceramic capacitor. Okay, uh, now that we're on the talking about capacitors, there's also another type of capacitor you can run into, uh, which is called a varactor diode. Basically something like a package like this, usually green green in color with a black stripe, but basically what a zener diode would look like in your circuit it would be like that, but you'd have two stripes on your diode. Again, same type of setup for your regular capacitor, but you got it here. Two stripes, two stripes, two stripes. That would mean it's a variable um, varactor diode. It means as you apply voltage across it, you change the capacitance of the circuit with this type of diode. It can be something similar, small, small like that. But basically, that's the simple circuit diagram for a varactor diode. Very useful in VF VCOs and VFOs. And tuning capacity and tuning circuits. Okay, so we'll go back to the diode again. Uh, this is a Zener diode. The Zener is a particular type of diode that, unlike a normal one, allows current to not only flow uh, from its anode to its cathode, but also in reverse direction, 
When a Zeno or when the Zener voltage is reached, the Zener diodes have a highly doped PN junction. So basically, this is the circuit diagram for a vector diode. Same thing like a regular diode. Get that only with a vector. Or a Zener, rather. That's a circuit diagram for a Zener diode. It means basically it can switch up or down. But uh, yeah, that is the circuit diagram for a uh, Zener diode. Zener, 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 Zener diode. Right there. And of course, we have the almighty S meter. Uh, not much you can say about that. This indicator. Um, Basically, this is what it would look like in a circuit. You have, let's see. It'd be like this. Positive, negative. So, yeah. Looks a lot like it. If you go that way, it looks like it, kind of. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That there is basically a uh, circuit diagram for a S meter or a meter. So as you can see, a lot of a lot of circuit diagrams, a lot of schematic diagrams, they come pretty close to what an actual item or component looks like. For me. And now we have a toggle switch, double toggle switch, uh, for turning off switches on or off, or circuits on and off. So basically, again, you have three contacts. Or six contacts, three in each side. Again, you have this slider. So we can go either up or down, depending on how you. So now you press her down, you push down. These two here are connected. And you press your switch up like that. And it just does the reverse of it. This contact slides up. Basically, that's the circuit diagram of an ordinary old toggle switch. And now we have this big beast. It's called the electrolytic capacitor. You'll see these in all kinds of electronic equipment. Um, used for smoothing and filtering of signals. And uh, yeah, so basically this is the basic schematic diagram of electrolytic capacitor. like the regular capacitor as you can see but this one would have a positive denoting is polarized that means one side of your capacitor is positive and the other one is negative in other words you don't want to take your positive and connect it to your negative put it in circuit chances are the capacitor would probably explode <laughs> or definitely do damage to the circuit so uh, be wary of which direction you put your electrolytic capacitor in. Very dangerous if you do it the wrong okay. way. So now we have the vacuum tube. We're all pretty much familiar with these guys. But uh, this is the basic circuit diagram of the vacuum tube. So you have your circle. Circle being the glass. You have a connection here, which would be a plate. That's what the main voltage would connect to. Uh, chances are you'd have this piece here. That would be your grid. Then you would have another circuit here. And there's a little diagram inside of it. Which would uh, represent your cathode. Cathode. And then you'll have another one here. Up and down. And it would be your filament. And filament 2. Basically when your tube glows, got that nice orangey color inside of it, it's your filament that lights up. It helps your tube electronics pass through the tube properly. If you had no filament voltage on some tubes, they will not Next, work at all. Next, uh, a couple of components we'll look at. We'll look at the IF inductor. Um, and then we'll look at a variable inductor. Basically, this will be the circuit diagram for these, for both of these. 
Since we're dealing with inductors, we'll do two of them at the same time. You get three on one side, two on the other, and this one just has two. So basically this is what the circuit diagram would look like. Uh, sometimes these would have a core, a ferric core. And then you have your output. And of course your core can move up or down. The slug. Slug being the center piece here, this round piece. That's a ferric core that moves up and down inside of this uh, can. That's the circuit diagram for that. And then we have the ordinary inductor, uh, variable inductor. It also has a ferret slug that can move up and down. Only this one. Obviously we have just two, two connections in and out. You have your core like this, and of course it would have its arrow. So there you go. That's the two diagrams for your uh, for your two coils. IF coil or receiver coil, whatever you want to call it. Uh, circuit diagram for that one. And then your circuit diagram for this one. Interesting stuff, eh? Don't you think? So there you go. A bunch of circuit diagrams. And yes, even I make a mistake sometimes. We'll look at the full wave bridge rectifier and the half wave bridge rectifier. This one's a full wave. You'll see this one in a lot of different circuits. So this is the circuit diagram for your or full wave bridge rectifier. He uses four diodes. And you see them usually in this type of configuration on your circuit. This one here, oh, going too far here. So you get positive on this side, negative on this side, AC here, and AC here. So that is your full wave bridge rectifier. So this thing here, this is what it would look like in a schematic diagram. That's what it would look like in a circuit. And uh, you'll also look at a uh, half wave bridge rectifier. This is a full wave, uses four diodes. Then you got a half wave, which is only used one diode. So basically, this is what it would look like in a circuit. You have your transformer. That's your primary, that's your secondary. Your diode would go in like that. And then you'd, for basically what you would have is your positive on this side, your negative on that side. But basically, using one diode, you can make a halfway bridge rectifier. Okay, so what we're gonna happen here now, uh, we got our circuit diagrams, basically. Now we're going to take a few pieces. We got our switch, our fuse, our transformer, our bridge rectifier, full wave bridge rectifier. We got our electrolytic capacitor. We got our voltage regulator, light bulb, and meter. And basically, oh yes, and of course, uh, probably going to want a resistor in there. The chances are. So let's uh, let's put all this on a piece of paper. Let's build a power supply on paper. So this is what all this would look like if you were to build it into a all right. box. So we got our AC plug right there. Of course we got two wires. Alright. So what you would 
do, you would fuse this side. You would more than likely switch this side. Off. 3 amp. AC. Then you would have your transformer. You again. Circuit diagram for your transformer. See, so far. So then we need our bridge rectifier. So we're going to build our bridge. Um, we're going to build it again, draw it out, same as it was last time. Like so. Alright, so as you remember, your AC connects your top and your bottom. Which just connect dots. Well, same thing there. So then you've got your DC signal. Do that so your connections are not touching. Alrighty. So then you got your uh, electrolytic capacitor. Positive, because we know this side is negative. We know this side is positive. Chances are you'd want a uh, bleeder resistor to discharge the capacitor. Especially if it's a high voltage circuit. <laughs> you'd want to discharge the voltage when the power is removed. And then you have your meter. show you your, your voltage or current in this case voltage negative positive so there we have it now this is unregulated this is if you are not using a voltage regulator you're at the mercy of the transformer and all the components so if you want to put a voltage regulator in here Basically, you take this, all this up here, this part from your rectifier back. So we know this is all the same. We know this is all the same. That's your positive. That's your negative. That's your positive. That's your negative. So what happens? You have your regulator. All right. Representing your pins. I should have done this a bit better than this. But, anyways, this is your input, this is your output, this is your ground. Right? redo this again I don't like how that regulator sitting there <laughs> kind of confused how it works there so we'll do this again all right again positive negative positive negative the cap you got your bleeder resistor and you got your voltmeter there you go so right now you can have um, 115 
volts on one side, you get 24 volts AC. Up the secondary or transformer, it gets rectified. Rectified, uh, probably summer, maybe in the vicinity. Uh, usually the dyno is going to step it up a little bit, so we'll say 28 volts just for just for a number. 28 volts. So that's on regulated, as you can see. Right now you got 28 volts. Uh, you can have 14 volts, of course, whatever your secondary is basically dictates your output but again uh, it takes you know your bridge rectifier and all the other components to regulate your voltage to whatever it is you need but so we take the same circuit here and move it down to here so you get your 28 volts just for argument's sake that's your input which goes to your regulator right this is a 12 volt regulator so on the output of it is plus 12 volt. That's how it works. Just like that. And there's other type of regulator. A, um, you can adjust, there's an adjustable regulator. Uh, use that with a variable resistor and whatnot. And you control the voltage output. So instead of having a fixed uh, voltage of 12 volt, you can variable, you can vary the voltage from 28 volts to zero. But that's another story. I actually plan on building one in power supply shortly. Anyways, I hope this video was of use for some people. I know it's a bit long winded. I'm probably going to get a few hate speeches, thumbs down, and all that crap. But, you know, if you guys think you can do better, go for it. Uh, this is my channel, and this is the way it is. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps, and of course, you got all your bits and pieces, your schematic symbols, and of course, how to put it into a circuit. Hey anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed it. All the best, and 73. This is Rhino 63, out.